This video came about in response to a couple of recent questions on social media. This is how I find reference values for R1 plus R2 on different circuits in TT systems, as there is no guidance for this in the wiring regulations and it's important that I check my work. We can use the on-site guide or the electrician's guide to the building regulations, since they both contain measured ZF tables and page numbers given relate to Amendment 2 of both books. This was the sort of question that was asked. If I install a new circuit in a TT dwelling, how do I know if my own wiring, the R1 plus R2, is OK, since there are no maximum ZF tables for the different breaker sizes in TT systems? A quick recap on TT systems will help. We have the supply cables, usually on overhead poles, but not always. There will be a supply transformer and fuses mounted on the poles and a line and neutral will be taken off to the dwelling. There is no copper earth connection between the pole and the dwelling. Instead, an earth rod is installed at the pole and at the property. The earth path during a fault relies on the general mass of earth. Electrons will be displaced into the soil in the vicinity of the house earth rod and electrons will be taken up by the earth rod at the overhead pole. ZS is the earth fault loop impedance for the whole system. If there is an earth fault, it is the path from the point of fault in the dwelling through the internal earth or CPC, out of the property and through the earth to the supply transformer and then back along the line conductor to the point of fault. We call it an impedance because it is a live measurement on an AC circuit, but it is still measured in ohms. ZE is the impedance of the external part of the wiring system. In a dwelling, this will be from the consumer unit out of the property into the general mass of earth and back along the line conductor to the consumer unit. R1 plus R2 is the internal wiring of the property, the inside wiring. We call this a resistance measured in ohms because it is measured on a dead circuit. It is the resistance of the line and earth for any circuit from the consumer unit to the furthest point of use in the house and back to the consumer unit. The lights will have an R1 plus R2. An immersion heater will have its own R1 plus R2 and so will the sockets. The whole thing, the whole wiring system inside and outside is called ZS and it is made up of two parts. ZE is the external part from the house to the supply transformer and then we have R1 plus R2 for each internal circuit. We can say that ZE added to R1 plus R2 equals ZS the whole system. How do we find R1 plus R2 from ZE and ZS? The equation shows that ZE plus R1 plus R2 equals ZS. If we subtract ZE from both sides of the equation, this will have the effect of moving ZE from the left side of the equation to the right side of the equation. And we are left with R1 plus R2 is equal to ZS minus ZE. In other words, the inside part equals the whole thing minus the outside part. But how do we know that R1 plus R2 is acceptable, since ZE and ZS will vary throughout the year with a TT system? We can measure R1 plus R2, but there are no tables for maximum ZS for different circuit breakers in TT systems. Typically, ZS values will be lower in the wet seasons of the year and higher in very dry seasons. It is the outside part that is changing. The inside wiring will remain as an almost constant resistance. So how can we find an acceptable R1 plus R2 when there are no tables for a TT system? We can use the TNCS and TNS tables in the books to determine a usable R1 plus R2 for a TT system. 
If you have the Electrician's Guide to the Building Regulations, shortened to EGBR, take a look at Table 4.1.2a on page 69. Here is a table that shows all the common breaker sizes with data for Type B breakers, including cable sizes, circuit lengths, and most importantly for us, the maximum ZE for TNCS and TNS systems and the maximum ZS values. We can do something with these figures. If you have the on-site guide or OSG, you'll find table B6 on page 145. Again, this contains data for TNCS and TNS systems and gives the maximum measured earth fault loop impedance for BS3871 and BSEN60898 circuit breakers and BSEN61009 RCBOs for different types. Let's have an example to show you the method. We have an immersion heater that is installed in a dwelling with a TT installation. It is rated at 2.8 kilowatts at 230 volts AC and is wired in 2.5 by 1.5 twin and earth cable, clipped direct with a circuit length of 40 meters. We measured the ZS at 72.08 ohms and measured the ZE at 71.3 ohms. We want to know what would be an acceptable R1 plus R2 for this circuit and do our figures conform? And what is the voltage drop for this circuit? This is what we have. R1 plus R2 is ZS minus ZE. So R1 plus R2 must be 72.08 minus 71.30 which equals 0 0.78. Our answer then is that R1 plus R2 equals 0 0.78 ohms. But the question still remains, is this an acceptable R1 plus R2 value for this circuit with this size circuit breaker? Let's use table 4.1.2a on page 69 of the Electrician's Guide to the Building Regulations and see what we get. The table tells us two things that we need to know. ZE for a TNCS system is 0 0.35 ohms and the maximum ZS for a 16 amp type B breaker is 2.2 ohms. If we subtract 0 0.35 from 2.2 we have 1.85 ohms maximum for R1 plus R2 for a TNCS system and we can use this value as a comparison figure for our TT system. In this example we have a 16 amp type B circuit breaker for a TNCS circuit and using the tables in the electrician's guide this has an R1 plus R2 of 1.85 ohms if we assume that ZE is 0 0.35 ohms. For a 16 amp type B circuit breaker in a TT circuit using the measured ZS and ZE that is given in the example, we have an R1 plus R2 of 0 0.78 ohms. Therefore, at 0 0.78 ohms, the R1 plus R2 for this example, the TT circuit, is less than the 1.85 ohms and is considered acceptable. We could also have used table B6 in the on-site guide. Just remember to deduct the 0 0.35 ohms for ZE in a TNCS system. 2.2 ohms minus 0 0.35 is 1.85 ohms again. And I always checked voltage drop to confirm that this was acceptable too. Looking back at page 69 of the electrician's guide, we can see that the table includes recommended maximum circuit lengths for different types of circuits. The example we are using is an immersion heater and the table recommends a maximum length of 50 meters for this cable size and this breaker. As we have a circuit length of just 40 meters, our voltage drop should be well below the 11.5 volts maximum as required by the wiring regulations. Let's do a quick calculation to confirm this. This is what we know about this example. IB is the design current at 12.17 amps. Length is 40 meters and MVAM is 18 
from table F6 in the on-site guide on page 177. The maximum permitted voltage drop is 11.5 volts and dividing by 1000 will convert the millivolts into volts. Follow this calculation and we have 8.76 volts, well below the permitted maximum voltage drop. All is good. And that is how I evaluate and confirm the internal wiring of a TT dwelling. A quick and easy method to give you peace of mind that this part of your own work is OK. There are no tables for maximum ZS for TT systems. Use the maximum measured ZS tables in the on-site guide for TNCS systems and deduct 0 0.35 ohms from the value given in the tables for the breaker that is installed. This will give you an R1 plus R2 figure that you can use to compare to your actual measured values for that circuit. If the actual measured R1 plus R2 is equal to or less than the R1 plus R2 extracted from the tables, then we can assume that the circuit values are acceptable. R1 plus R2 is ZS minus ZE. ZS is the earth fault loop impedance for the whole system from the point of use or test to the supply transformer and back again. ZE is the earth fault loop impedance for the external part of the system from the intake position to the supply transformer and back again. R1 plus R2 is the resistance of the line and earth conductors of the circuit that is under test from the consumer unit to the point of test and back to the consumer unit. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated and I hope that you found this video useful and that you've learnt a little more. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer or smart device. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again very soon.